Hello friends. So let's talk about creating full factorial uh, factorial design. So let's get started. Uh, report the IBC company, a uh, manufacturer of paints and primers. Uh, the process implement team at the company wants to determine the primer type and spray pressure settings that maximize adhesion. So how can the team design an experimental uh, experiment that determines how these factors affect paint, paint adhesion? Okay, so first we need to determine which factors to evaluate in the in an experiment. This requires process knowledge in conjunction with statistical results. We can use regression or ANOVA to identify factors that are significantly related to a response. A design experiment can clarify the, uh, the uh, effect of these factors. Uh, next, we need to determine at which levels we want to set the factors in the experiment, uh, experiment. We want to select levels that are far enough apart so that a difference may be detected. At the same time, we don't want to select level settings that are so far apart that they are unsafe or unrealistic for the process. Uh, next, uh, we determine which responses to measure. A process can have a multiple uh, responses, but in this example, we are only con concerned with paint adhesion. When uh, we then choose a design, there are two types of factorial designs, a two-level factorial designs and general factorial designs. In the two-level factorial designs, each experimental uh, factor has only two levels. Two levels have only two levels. A two-level full factorial design with two factors A and B can be displayed graphically with a square where each corner uh, represents a run in the design. A two-level full factorial design with three factors A, B, and C can be displayed graphically with a cube where each corner represents a run in the design. The two-level design is often called a two-power K design where the number number two uh, Number two represents the number of levels for each factor and the exponent k represents the number of factors. General rule factorial designs are used when any experimental factors has more than two levels. Uh, this diagram represents a general factorial design where factor a is stated at two levels while well, the factor B is stated at three levels. Uh, for instance, if the a ABC paint company were in uh, were investigating the effect of the three primers, three primers instead of only two, we would use a general full factorial experiment to understand the effect of the factors on paint adhesion. Okay, so ABC, uh, ABC chooses a two-level uh, design for this study. In this case, the two factors are primer, primer type and spray pressure. Primer type is a cate uh, categorical factor and spray pressure is numeric. The levels of four primer type are primer A and primer B. The levels for spray pressure are 300 and 400 kilopascals. In a full factorial design, responses are measured at all combination, all combination of the experimental factor level factor levels. <coughs> the combination of factor levels represent the 
conditions at which responses will be measured. So which of these is a full factorial design? A full factorial design contains all combination of the factor levels. Each experimental condition is called a run and the response measurement is called an observation. The entire set of runs is a design. Recall that a 2 power 2 design is a square where each uh, corner of the square represent, represents a treatment combination. Okay, so with two factor, factors at two levels of two power two design, the full factorial design requires four runs. The two level design is called the two power k design, where the number two represents the number of levels for each factor, and the exponent k represents the number of factors. So how many runs are required in a full factorial design with three factors at two levels? For three factors, each with two levels, the full factorial design contains eight runs. Two times two times two. Notice that this design is cube, where each corner of the cube represent, represents the treatment combination. When we design an experiment, we know in advance what kind of model we can fit before we collect the data. A 2 power 2 full factorial design, a factorial experiment uh, requires 4 runs. Each of the runs uh, allow us to estimate a term in our product, uh, predictive model. Predictive model uh, for a design with two factor, factors A and B. We want to estimate the main effect the main effect effects and also the interaction between A and B. Any unused runs can be used in the error terms to test for statistical significance. Regardless of the factorial design, we always use one run to estimate the intercept beta zero. So in n runs, we will be able to estimate at most uh, at most n minus one terms in a single uh, replicate of the full factorial design all of the run are spent mean there is no way to estimate the error term for this model the error or measure of uncertainty determines which terms are statistically significant So how can the team estimate the error term? The team decides to replicate each combination of primer type and spray pressure four times. Mm, a replicate is a duplicate run of the factor levels uh, combination in an experiment. This means that we reset the equipment which the factor combination settings at a different, different time in the experiment. This is different from the from a, re, a repeated measurement where we collect multiple observations from a single run of the experiment. Replication includes sources of variability from setting up equipment, resetting factors, and the natural variation in the process. By replicating the runs, the team will be able to estimate pure replication error which provides provide the best estimate of experimental variability uh, will have a better idea of the uncertainty around the estimates and will know whether differences we observe are statistically significant. Which of these questions cannot be answered by replicating a design experiment? Replicating a design experiment will only provide multiple re measurements at the corners of the design space. Replica uh, replicating an experiment will not detect curvature in the experiment region. 
the design is currently displayed in the standard order we list uh, we list the low and high levels for the first factor spray pressure while we hold the second factor primer constant at the low level then we list the low and high levels for the first factor again for the uh, for the high level of primer the design has four replicas which means that each factor combination is run more than one time the first four rows represent a single replicate of the experiment with one treatment per row the pattern repeats three more times pattern repeats three more times for a total of four replicas another important component of a design experiment is randomization in practice we randomize randomize the run order uh, randomize the run order in an experiment by randomizing the order in which the runs are performed and they and the way experimental material is allocated we are controlling for unknown sources of variation that may affect our results randomization minimizes the possibility that other environmental factors will affect test results factors such as ambient temperature humidity raw material or operators can change during the experiment and in advertently affect the test results we we are ready to run the experiment and collect data operators apply primer to an aluminum surface using a designated spray pressure then they apply paint and measure the adhesive force required to pull the paint from the base metal so let's review a full factorial design consists of runs that measure responses at all com combinations of the experimental factor levels replication allow, allow us to estimate the variability in the design efficiently randomization allow us to average out any external uncontrollable factors that may affect our results thank you for your listening in the next lesson, we'll analyze full factorial designs.